Tonight we're continuing uh, the story of David, okay? We've gone through several different stories along the way, um, and we're going to continue on in that series. Uh, we took a little break here and there to talk about sex. I don't want to say that too loud. Uh, but yeah, we're back to the story of David. Um, tonight we're going to talk about integrity. So how would you yourself define integrity? Max. Did you? Doing the right thing when nobody's looking. I like that, yeah. Trevor, did you have your hand up? The same thing. That's pretty good. What's that? It, it, it is a good definition. I definitely like that. So the dictionary.com uh, defines integrity as adherence to moral and ethical principles, soundness of moral character, or honesty. So definitely along those same lines. Um, <coughs> but in our lives, we should definitely be striving to handle ourselves with integrity. Um, the reason that I wanted to play this game tonight, the, it is one of my favorites, so that's one reason. But the other reason is um, it can show a lot about you and how you play that game, right? So I have a tendency to get super competitive, and so I'll snatch the pen from somebody before I really should, or I'll hold on to it a little bit tighter so somebody doesn't quite get it from me, or I happen to roll the, the dice just a little bit farther away from someone, <laughs> Right, so uh, it really is a test of, of your integrity, right? So how badly do you want to win? Um, are you willing to play the right way and take your chance and try to win the right way versus trying to cheat, right? <laughs> um, <coughs> so to recap kind of what we've talked about in the past as far as David goes, so we've talked about uh, David slaying Goliath and being anointed by Samuel uh, as a king at 15 years old. And so uh, on my slides, I have a, a picture of what I think of when I think of David at a young age. So as soon as Reg is available, <laughs> he's going to sh show you <laughs> the picture that I think of. So yeah, David defeats Goliath. There it is, <laughs> right? The Veggie Tales story. That's what I think of when I'm thinking of, of little David slaying Goliath. So that little David also being anointed as king at 15 years old. So then we talked about David on the run from Saul, and I have another picture that I think of when I think of him running. So we talked about him as a great warrior and then on the run. So I think of Swiper the Fox. You guys remember Swiper the Fox? Swiper no swiping. Doesn't really totally fit Right? Doesn't totally fit because we're not talking about him necessarily swiping something, but sneaking off into the distance through the night, that type of thing. So that's the first thing that came to my mind. And then when David takes the throne as king when he's age 30, I think of the statue of David, right? This big, strapping, muscular guy. We cut it off just at the right spot so we keep it appropriate <laughs> for the crowd. Um, so yeah, that's what I think of when I think of David as a king. So <coughs> in previous lessons, we learned how, how Saul died. And tonight, we're talking about David, his ascension to the throne, and the integrity that he's displayed throughout basically the entire journey, okay? So <coughs> the first thing I want to I talk about is David's reaction to Saul's death, right? So... Um, at one point in time, they were pretty close, right? But for a long time, as David was running, Saul was trying to kill him, right? So how did David handle the news that, that Saul had died? So if you guys, in your Bibles, flip to 2 Samuel one we We'll start there and read through exactly how David responded. <clears throat> so 2 Samuel 1, verse 12. All right, once you got there, put your hand up in the air so I know we're all good. 
still flipping. Hopefully we know about where 2 Samuel is since we've been talking about David for a while and we should be in that same vicinity. Okay, so in uh, 2 Samuel <coughs> one twelve, it says, They mourned and wept and fasted till evening for Saul and his son Jonathan and for the army of the Lord and for the nation of Israel because they had fallen by the sword. So if you think about <coughs> what David had gone through, how he had been on the run, like, why would, he, why would he feel that way? Why would he weep? Wouldn't he be excited that finally he's free of, of the pursuit of Saul? And then in 2 Samuel uh, 1, 17 and 18, it says, David took up uh, this lament concerning Saul and his son Jonathan, and he ordered that the people of Judah be taught this lament of the bow. Would you cry if your worst enemy or your nemesis died, or something happened to them, would you really be sad? <clears throat> so what, uh, what about if, if they simply failed at something? So I was thinking about, as a, a, a sports fan, as a college basketball fan, right? It's March Madness. Um, uh, who do I? I think Villanova. So I'm still alive in that regard, but I have several teams that have been bowed out. So... If you're, if you're a KU basketball fan, and <coughs> um, that's your favorite team, and we all know you don't like Mizzou, you don't like K-State, right? So if you're watching the Missouri Tigers play in the first round, are you cheering for them to win, or are you pretty excited that they lost? Most times I would say you're pretty excited they lost, right? Um, what about when K-State was playing... Um, they, they, they had a huge upset, right? They upset the number 16 team, UMBC, right? Huge upset for K-State to win that game. Were you rooting for K-State or were you rooting for them to lose? <coughs> yeah, that is a good story. And if you're a KU fan, the bonus is K-State lost, right? Um, for me personally, I coach volleyball, so sometimes uh, it's hard not to want other teams to lose, right? Teams that we face a lot that maybe we don't have the success um, that we'd like to have, it's hard not to maybe think, all right, that's, that's really cool they lost. I'm pretty happy about that, right? But <coughs> in the end, if, I, if I'm someone of integrity, I want to make sure you know, I'm supporting the people I know, I want them to do well, and also as a coach, if I beat that team, it means that much more, right? So David, in a moment that most people or a lot of people would celebrate, right, the death of Saul, he wept. He didn't forget that once they were friends, once that he, he served Saul, and that at one point in time, Jonathan had um, helped him escape Saul, right? He didn't forget those things. So for key point number one, I want you guys to write down, if we're seeking to be people of integrity, don't celebrate the failure of others. Okay, we don't need to do that. There's nothing really to be gained from it. <coughs> and as you can see, David would agree, right? All right, so now that Saul's gone, what's next? So David was in line to be king, right? So uh, what do you think he did first? So Saul's gone. He's supposed to be king. What, what did he do first? What do you think? Anyone? All right, how about if you were named king or queen? What would be the first thing that you would do? <coughs> go shopping? Okay, Trevor. Hold on, quiet, quiet, I can't hear. So have a party for yourself to celebrate you as king? Yeah. What's that? Give homeless people, sh that's really good. Shelter, good. Yeah. Execute all the bad people in the world. Interesting. Yeah? 
if you had that power, maybe you could do that, right? So <coughs> if, if I think about what I would do, not even necessarily as king, but if I had a ton of money, what would I get? Would I get um, a Tesla yep. with all the bells and whistles, right? Not just the base model, all the bells and whistles, right? The one that's going to drive itself, I just get in there and go, right? <coughs> so let's look into what David what David did first. So now let's flip to 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. So flip to that. You should be pretty close. <coughs> so it says, In the course of time, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up to one of these towns of Judah? He asked. The Lord said, Go up. And David asked, Where shall I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered. So in this, <coughs> in this verse, it doesn't talk about David asserting his authority immediately, right? It doesn't talk about him <coughs> taking over the world. He goes to God first, right, and asks God what's next for him. So after David became king, there was still some division um, with, the, with the various tribes, right? So... Um, David assumed the throne over the tribe of Judah, and then um, Abner, who was a commander under uh, for Saul's army, um, he basically fought for Saul's son to take over several other tribes. So there was some conflict there. Um, there's kind of a funny story that I'll read through of interesting of not the best strategy of war, um, so we'll talk about that real quick. Um, in 2 Samuel 2.14, it says, Then Abner said to Joab, who was the, he was the commander for David's army, he said, Let's have some of the young men get up and fight hand-to-hand -hand in front of us. So this kind of began the conflict between the, between the various tribes. It says, All right, let them do it, Joab said. <coughs> so they stood up and were counted off. Twelve men... For uh, 12 men for Benjamin and Ishbosheth, Ish son of Saul, and 12 for David. Then each man grabbed his opponent by the head and thrust his dagger into the opponent's side, and they fell down together. So it's 12 verse 12, everybody dies. Pretty brilliant strategy, right? So that's how the conflict sort of began. Um, <coughs> between David and the various tribes um, headed up by Abner. Okay, so they ended up beyond that. They had, they had many more battles after that, and David's army grew stronger and stronger. Eventually, Abner gave in and submitted <coughs> uh, to the many tribes that David really should be the king overall. <coughs> so what, what do you think might have happened if David was on a huge power trip and immediately just tried to take over. He probably could have done that, right? But do you think his armies would have been as strong? Okay, by him seeking God first and that guidance, it allowed him to build up his army over time. <coughs> so instead of having this huge power trip that now I'm the king, I'm going to assert my authority, I'm going to take over everywhere, he sought God first and that led him slowly but surely, to take over more and more of the tribes. And then he ruled over all of Israel. So he didn't force things on his own timing or agenda. He let God guide him through the process. So in point number two, if we're seeking to be people of integrity, we should seek God's guidance. Rather than do things on our own, the first thing we should do is turn to God for guidance. So then transitioning from that, <coughs> think about promises, okay? There's people nowadays that make a lot of poli uh, promises. Politicians are a great example, right? They promise everything, they promise the world, and rarely deliver, right? 
<coughs> so when we go through elections, you hear a lot of, a lot of uh, debates and this and that, and oftentimes what happens when those um, people become president, they don't really deliver on what they promise, right? So <coughs> if you're to think about in your life, if you make a promise to someone, is that promise something that you can keep? So, for example, if I promise to take Austin to a KU basketball game, to keep in the context of college sports and basketball, I like KU. <coughs> if we were to go when they played in Wichita, I'd say, Austin, um, I promise to take you. Okay, we haven't gone to a game in a while. I promise to take you to that game. It's going to be expensive. I know uh, ticket prices for NCAA tournament are not cheap. And so we're all set to go, and I get a call from a friend that says, hey, man, I got front row seats. They're free. Food's paid for, everything, front row, court side. Um, and then I say, how many tickets do you have? Well, just one for you. So I'm going with my buddy, or am I taking Austin, paying for two, maybe 200 bucks a ticket to sit in nosebleeds, or do I go for free with my friend and sit front row? What do you do? Right? Do you stick? <laughs> What's that? I should let Austin go with my friend. I didn't even think about that. That's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, that one ticket, I give it, give it to you, buddy. So, yeah, well, I mean, really, what do you do? Right? You would, I would hope if I was really in that situation, I would stick to it and take Austin to the game, spend the money. It's about the experience, right, together. So, and according to David, really, <coughs> you stick with your promise, okay? No matter what, no matter the circumstances, you stick with your promise. So if we flip to, uh, back to 1 Samuel 20, verse 12, it says, Then Jonathan said to David, <coughs> I swear by the Lord, the God of Israel, that I will surely sound out my father by this time, the day after tomorrow. If he is favor favorably disposed toward you, will I not send you word and let you know? If my father intends to harm you, may the Lord deal with Jonathan, be it ever so severely. If I do not let you know and send you away in peace, may the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. But show me unfailing kindness like the Lord's kindness as long as I live, so that I may not be killed. And do not ever cut off your kindness from my family. Not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him, because he loved him as he loved himself. So if we fast forward to the point in the story we are now, right, we know that Saul and Jonathan have both died, right? But Jonathan had a son, and I'll probably butcher this name, but it's Mephif Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Uh, yeah, say that ten times fast. So Mephibosheth, um, after an accident, couldn't walk. Like, had um, severe damage to legs and feet where he couldn't walk. He was considered lame. So um, <coughs> if we fast forward to, to uh, 2 Samuel 4 and then 2 Samuel 9, we read that David continued to hold true to his promise in taking care of Jonathan and his family. So his son, Mephibosheth, um, he invited to stay with him in his kingdom and, and basically protect him. And that was as part of his promise way back when to Jonathan. So even though Jonathan's gone, he still stayed true to that promise. No matter what happened, where they were, he took care of Jonathan's family. Okay, so key point number three, if you're going to be a person of integrity, you need to keep your promises. So one of the keys there is don't make promises you can't keep under any and all circumstances. So if I make a promise to someone, I better be well equipped 
to follow through on it, regardless of what happens, right? Regardless of if someone offers me front row seats to the KU game. I'm ready to honor my promise and take Austin and sit in the 300 level in the back row. <coughs> All right, so then as we reflect on David, think about how you can be a, a person of integrity in your life. So you guys go back to school. <coughs> there's trials every day, right? Whether it's the drama with friends or uh, some bullies or teachers you don't like, whatever it might be, how do you respond to that situation? How can you respond to each situation that you deal with in your life, whether at school or at home, with integrity? Okay, and you can reflect back and think about the three main points, right? We talked about first, not celebrating the failure of others. So when you're in school and there's somebody you don't like and they bomb a test, don't celebrate that. Okay, that's not cool, all right? But also, when you're faced with times of trial, seek God's, gu God's guidance, okay? Whether that's through prayer, whether it's getting into your Bible, whether it's seeking wise counsel. We've talked about that before here. The leaders are here to help you, right? So if you're facing something in your life, those are people that you can turn to. How should I deal with this situation, okay? We've gone through a little bit more life than, than you guys, and maybe we've dealt with the same thing. Maybe we didn't handle it the right way, so we can, we can learn from that, or maybe we did handle something the right way, and it's something for you guys to try. <coughs> but the key is to make sure that you're prepared to handle yourself with integrity. All right? That's all that I have for you tonight.